We were hanging out in Buena Vista, Colorado with a little extra time on our hands. So Chris suggested that Ted and I join him for a hike on the Alpine Tunnel Trail. He sold us on the cool history of the trail and the fact that it was only 26 mile drive from where we were. What he failed to mention was how the last five miles of that drive were on a rough, heavily rutted gravel road. But he also sold us on the short distance that it's only six miles round trip, the non-technical trail, the gentle grade, and the gorgeous views. And on all of those points, he delivered as promised. So how long of a drive up that gravel road was it? Five miles up the rough road and was it about 11 on the smooth gravel? The trail started off a little muddy, but uh, overall it was very smooth. It's built on an old railroad line, so Every once in a while you'd see the old railroad ties, but uh, nice, smooth, easy grade all the way up. I loved the history as we were walking up. You could picture that old train going up this small little section of the mountain. First sign we came to was about Sawmill Curve, the only tight corner in the entire section, and the brakemen had to have special skill to make sure they didn't take the train off the rails when it was coming around that corner. Located in Pitkin, Colorado, the Alpine Tunnel was at one time the highest railroad tunnel in the world and was the most expensive at the time. It's no longer active, it's all closed in, um, but it sits up at 11,500 feet and it was the first tunnel to cross the Continental Divide, which truly makes it groundbreaking in every sense of the word. Now this trail is at high altitude in Colorado, so of course they had to deal with snow. So they had the rotation or rotary snow plows to get the snow off the tracks, but uh, a man by the name of Orange Jewel created the Jewel Centrifugal Snow Excavator. And uh, they took it out for a test drive with four engines pushing it, and it derailed three times. So they went back to the old rotary plows. I love this story. The land for the track was given to the railroad by a local dairy farmer named John Parlin around 1877, with the condition that the railroad would build a depot and stop for at least five minutes so passengers could buy milk. Brilliant business plan. They started digging the tunnel in 1880 with a goal of finishing it within six months. Those dreams and plans diminished very quickly as soon as they realized the project was going to take a lot longer. Two years later, they finally opened it up and the tunnel was 1,700 feet long at over two miles above sea level. Very impressive. You think there used to be a tunnel there? Does this water come through the tunnel? That's what I'm guessing is it's got to be coming out from it. We think the water's coming out through the tunnel there. That flat part was probably the head of the tunnel. Chris is going to remove a few of these boulders and see if we can't get into it. Go get them, Muscles. Bravo to the brave men who worked up there in the hazardous conditions for $3 a day. Chris and Ted walked back a little bit to where they think the cabins were that housed the workers.
Oh, I should put a case on that thing.